Uh, recently, there was a car photography kit. So there was a show. A friend of mine put on a star show, and I offered to actually go and do the. Let me hang this thing here. Uh, for now. Uh. And during this entire thing, <laughs> I made so many mistakes. It's actually shocking. Crap! I bought the wrong cable. <laughs> uh, I bought, brought the cable for the other camera. This thing doesn't use USB-C, so I'll be shooting without the cable attached to the camera. So with events such as this one, you don't have the luxury of deciding where, where your location is going to be. This is all dependent on the client what what location they're going to utilize. Obviously, you do have an idea prior to the event. You can actually go and check. What is going on at the location and so forth? That's number one. Number two, because this day, because this event happens throughout the day, it basically started in the morning and it ended late in the evening. So you're constantly needing to adjust and manage those. The light that is coming through, the light that you are working with, the sun is currently sitting on my right hand side, as you can see, it's filling on this side and the shade on this side. This is gonna move. By 12 o'clock, the sun will be sitting right above my head. By 2 o'clock, the sun will be sitting a little bit more that way. By 5 o'clock, the sun will be, or 6 o'clock, the sun will be sitting on that side. So you need to make adjustments in order for you to be able to adapt to that. Physically, you need to be fit, especially with a big event. My back started paining after a while because I'm consistently walking and I'm slouching because I have the gimbal with me. Sometimes I'm shooting upright, sometimes I'm shooting with the gimbal here in front of me, sometimes the gimbal is here at the bottom. Physically, it's taxing. Let's calibrate this thing. For the testing today, just to go through it quickly, I'm using a DJI RS2 Pro, as well as a Canon 90D with a 50mm lens. Use a gimbal. A gimbal is definitely gonna be an advantage for you whenever you are doing car type of photography. Obviously, there's multiple shots that you want to go for, there's multiple angles that you want to do, and the easiest way for you to do that while doing all of this is utilizing a gimbal to get that stability when it comes to video and so forth. If it is that you're going to take more photos, then a tripod would definitely be the best option for you to do. For video, gimbal. Yeah, don't think twice about it. A gimbal would definitely be a very brilliant option you can see I'm getting old. The, my ankle started painting, my calf started painting. You know, I'm really unfit. Eh? Anyway. Ah, so this is why. My horizontal calibration failed. Here we go. So choosing the right oh, choosing the right lens for this is is crucial as well. I'm shooting with a 50mm. A 50mm is way too tight. Whether it is with a Full frame sensor, it's way too tight. Trying to get you, getting yourself a much wider angle lens in order for you to get the footage, it's a much better option. So if I do shoot with a 50 mil, I need a lot of space between myself and the car. Just to give you an idea, I'm very far away from the car. I'm currently shooting at 50 mil. And the distance between myself and the car is staggering. That's why getting yourself a uh, shorter focal distance or a wider focal distance is a lot better option. So if I come with, and I'm, I'm going to take this now and I'm going to shoot the same shot. So this is what it looks like with my phone. And this is what it looks like, how tight it is on the gimbal. When it comes to the settings that you're setting your camera at, so depending on the frame rate that you're shooting, get it to shoot in 4K 60 than in 1080p 60, because in 4K 60, you can obviously crop in a little bit more. 4K 60 might have an additional crop factor associated with it, depending on the camera. Some cameras has the capability of shooting 4K 60 in full frame, others don't. Shooting in 60 frames per second, ensuring that your shutter speed is current is at double. 60 frames per second, shutter speed I'm setting at 120, at 120 and now I can make adjustments to my aperture. My aperture is then going to give me the capability to darken the image as much as possible. My ISO I'm keeping at 100 for now because it is broad daylight. I'm not making any changes to the shutter speed, just making adjustments on the aperture.
nice thing about using a gimbal as well is I can take this thing and I can bring it upside down. So I can keep this here if I want to get that nice low angle shot. I can just do that as well. So I'm going to go in low. Don't be in a hurry. With these type of things, especially at an, in a, at an event that this big, the cars are not going anywhere. From a photo perspective, exactly the same thing. Make sure that you get your angles right, make sure that you get your lighting right, make sure that you get everything that you need to get right, get it right. If you want to ensure that you get the best out of this entire thing, do what you need to do with the car that you're currently busy with. People at these type of events, they are very willing and very comfortable with you actually asking, can you just go and park the car for me over there? Uh, we just want to get a couple of shots and so forth. Tip number five, get yourself variable ND filters. Uh, you can use these, these are very cheap. Some, some of these you can actually get off Amazon. I'll, say, I'll, I'll share a link in the description below for this as well. So composition is one of those things where you decide on how you want this thing to look. So if you look behind me, there's a couple of buildings on that side. If I turn myself this way, there's only a sky and it looks very planned. So if I decide to take a shot of the car, the nicer shot would be for me to then capture the shot to that buildings in the background on that side there. If there was cloud in the sky, that is also something that I would utilize. There's the one shot and that looks a hundred times better. 